So today we are uh, going on a little adventure around Cumberland, Royston, and where I kind of grew up a little bit. Grew up, let's say that loosely. Uh, and so we came to Fallen Alders uh, Hall, which is like right kitty cornered on my street um, in Cumberland and Royston. And um, yeah, there's a little plaque for my uh, grandpa and my granny, which is super cute here. We used to have a bunch of family gatherings and stuff there. Next, we're going to go down to my old farmhouse, which isn't there, but the land still is. Lainey was just telling me that on these steps to this hall, while she was rehearsing a song, she had her first beer, first Corona. Yeah. <laughs> it was my granny's 80th birthday. Yeah. I'm, Brady, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Brie and I stole it from the cooler. I'm pretty sure it was like my Uncle Rick's or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very historical. <laughs> moment, guys, moment. So on our little adventure today, Lini and I, well, Lini showed me this little spot, the Cumberland Chinese Cemetery, which the land for this was purchased in 1897 as a burial place to honor some of the workers. There were many Japanese-Canadian and Chinese-Canadian uh people who worked in the mines and local industries and there are many of them buried right here many of which have been here for the better part of or maybe even longer than a century pretty incredible I'm trying to be careful how I walk while I'm in here because see the headstones are in line this way but I believe that these very well could be graves as well a, I think there's a good chance. I have no idea. Just going by the way the grass is, I feel like that perhaps even these are unmarked graves. I have no idea. This grave is in desperate need of uh, some sort of restoration. You can just make out the date that this person would have lived from, I believe, 1888 to 1934. So this grave has been here 85 years. And it's been so thoroughly covered in moss that it's almost impossible to read. Some of these dates are more recent. This cemetery is still certainly used to this day. I've noticed that virtually all of the graves have stones placed on them. I need to look up what the significance of that is. I'm not sure. Somber place this is. right here and there's a creek that goes along the property line and this is by the road and all the trees have grown around the creek and it's beautiful and all the rocks are covered in moss we just used to play down here and it's really really cute and the neighbor has a bridge that goes over to their house oh hi kitty <laughs> yeah and so this driveway here was a little bridge over the creek so from here to there it's just a cool yeah. place to play when you're a kid yeah Especially, yeah, these mossy, cute little rocks in there. Pretty sure fairies live here. Probably. <laughs> if they were to live somewhere, it would be here. Definitely. It's so cute. I usually have enough courage to go actually climb in there, but today I didn't for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. It looked particularly treacherous today. This is an incredible little spot Lini brought me to. You said the water's really hot, right? Well, because it pools in these little puddles and heats up. Yeah, and then you, they, they act as little natural hot tubs. You can see a couple of the little... It's all covered with water. The water level's a bit higher than it usually is right now. But you can see little pools that when the water level's down a bit more, water just sits there and like you said, heats up and you can sit in it like a hot tub and you can jump off those falls too. Yeah, it's just potholes. Yeah. Little potholes. Walk down to the water, it really is a pretty incredible spot. You can't see it from this vantage point, but there's a hydroelectric dam up the way a little bit. Hence, why the water level has a tendency to raise and lower. It's 
it's technically on private property owned by the logging company, but every summer dozens of people come down and more than dozens, hundreds of people come down and swim in these what are affectionately referred to as the potholes. Yeah. It's, they're just mining shafts. There's a bunch all over Cumberland. So you can find them all over the place, but I don't know. When I was a kid, I just called it Jack's, like Dracula's castle. <laughs> well, cool. yeah. That is amazing. Be, it used to be you could go up in behind there and the, you could actually go in like tunnels and stuff um, that would take you under, but they closed them all off when they built the highway. And Yeah, I don't blame them. That doesn't sound like the safest thing. Well, no, but it was... <laughs> it was fun, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. I'm going to walk up to that. It looks scary. This is incredible. It's also a bike trail, so I keep having to watch for bikers going through. Or cyclists, rather. So these cool archways are here. And then look at this. Lini was telling me that these are the shafts. But that it was totally... Sealed so up. Apparently these structures were built between 1912 and 1914 and they actually did very little actual underground exploration for the mines before they were closed and allowed to flood in 1915. But about 20 years later in 1936 they reopened these shafts and mining uh, operations went on in here for another just about 20 years before they were again closed in 1953. The mines remained, or the shafts rather, remained open and explorable until they sh sealed them all off years ago when they built this highway. Very cool piece of history. Hiding off the side of was one of the lo uh, one of the logging roads here in the Cumberland area. Amazing. I wanted to come over and read the writing that was on here because I thought that maybe it was original and it said something about what the shaft was, but no, upon coming closer to it, it just says punch Nazis. Great. <laughs> Some twisted up sheet metal back there and pieces from houses and stuff for sure. Some more in behind it as well. Crazy to think that people made this their homes and filled this area up with memories. Years and years and years ago, and this is all that remains. Wow. Some really cool old stuff like this. Old destroyed oil can in the ground. What I didn't notice here was right in behind this slab is the entrance to one of the original mine shafts. Look, you can see there. This probably used to be where the tunnel started, and I guess they eventually filled it in. That's cool.
They also have a little cafe in the old 1907 customs office. How cool is that? Awesome use of this space in the old customs building. They even have an old vault, which is now used as a staff area back there. Cool. Ooh, I love miniatures. Look at this cool dollhouse they have here in the old customs house bakery. It's pretty cool. Here's a cool picture of what this place used to look like before they converted it into a bakery slash coffee shop. Well, we've packed it up once more. On to Beach Fire Brewing for show number two of the five gig weekend. Woo hoo! Should be awesome. And it's time for the show. We are here at Beach Fire Brewing here in Campbell River. A little bit of a smaller setup for us today, but we got it done. Beautiful bar here. And we're set up just in here. Yay! Awesome! Gonna be a great show. I don't have a ukulele, but I'm gonna play it anyway. It's a song called Rip Time. I 
Alright, and just like that, we're done with the show. We are all packed up. We've got our delicious dessert to go. Got our growler. And we've got the car all packed. We had a great show tonight. And we got three more to go this weekend, don't we? Alright, I'm sorry I keep filming these uh, vlog conclusions outside in terrible light. But again, people inside are always sleeping and I never get a chance to do these final updates until after the show is done, which is always at night. So, yeah, we had a great show today in Campbell River. Really an awesome time. It was pretty packed. I don't know if the videos quite did justice, just how much uh, Beach Fire was packed tonight. But uh, that was my first show at Beach Fire Brewing. Um, my second show now in Campbell River, as I've done two in a row. And this weekend has only just begun. Courtney tomorrow, then Quadra Island the next day, and then on Sunday we're back here in Campbell River for a show. So, two down, three to go. It's a big weekend and it'll continue tomorrow, so check out tomorrow's vlog as well. And check out links to, um, to where to find all my music online and all my future tour dates as well. Um... And yeah, my website, gramstrangmusic.com. So yeah, thank you for watching, and um, see you again tomorrow.